What's going on everybody? Tom here with Black Sheep Keto and welcome to another video review just for you subscribers out there. And if you're not a subscriber yet, please consider doing so. Now today we have a whole slew of ice cream in front of me as you can see and this is the Keto Collection from Enlightened. So previously Enlightened's ice cream were a little higher in carbs and not so much on the keto ingredient side of things. So they released this Keto Collection in an attempt to hit that keto market. Now again, for full disclosure purposes, I did get this product for free. They reached out to me about two weeks before they even announced this product and asked me if I wanted to try some. So, of course, I said yes, but that will not affect my review in any way or criticism of any ingredients that may be in there. Now this review is gonna be slightly different because there are so many different ice creams, I'm not gonna be able to step through every macro and ingredient on each thing. Before we start the review, I will point out a few ingredients that are a little questionable to me, and then as I'm reviewing them, I will put the macros and the full ingredient list to the side of me here. So if that sounds good to you guys, hang on tight, and let's get tasting. Now I mentioned in the intro that I was going to point out an ingredient that I thought might be questionable and it is in every single one of these things and my spidey senses were telling me that you guys were going to ask questions about it too. So that ingredient is non-GMO soluble corn fiber. Now typically when I see things that say corn in it, I typically go the other way because you know what, it's keto, we don't really have corn. But since we allow erythritol in a ketogenic diet and erythritol is based out of corn, I decided, you know what, let's do some research on this and see what we can find. As it turns out, it is very hard to find information on soluble corn fiber. Now, the one thing I did find was it did make the FDA safe fiber list, which is things like, I don't know, husk powder, inulin, that type of stuff. Um, things that are not on there is stuff like IMO and uh, tapioca fiber, those things that we know will spike our insulin levels. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that it's safe for now. I couldn't find an exact glycemic index. I found some people estimating it, but it wasn't really good evidence. I even found a blog that was, you know, very N equals one anecdotal saying that they mixed up some soluble corn fiber and drank it and they had a mild um, increase in their blood sugar levels, but it was very mild. So at this point, I don't really know what to think about that non-GMO corn fiber. If you guys have a good scientific resource for me uh, that you've read up on corn fiber, please leave it down in the description because I'm very curious to learn more about it. But based on the research that I did, I couldn't really find a lot of concrete evidence. So for now, I'm going to assume it's okay until otherwise proven. Now we'll go over the macro specifically for each one or rather put them on the screen when we address that flavor. But just as a brief cursory review of things, they all range from 15 to 18 grams of fat and two to four grams of protein per serving. And they're all claiming one net carb per serving. So let's get started with this one on my left here, which is the chocolate peanut butter. Now the label did not say to leave them out for 20 minutes ahead of time, but I went ahead and did it anyway because they felt a little firm to me. And as you can see, this will be the first taste for me as well. So. Let's give the chocolate peanut butter a try. Now that is very, very tasty. It's chocolatey. There's a nice vein of peanut butter that runs through it. So you kind of get some texture from it. And the peanut butter does kind of cling to your mouth like you would if you were eating a scoop of peanut butter. As far as the ice cream goes, it scoops really well. And I do quite enjoy the flavor. The chocolate isn't even that overpowering like it normally would be. So for this one, I'm going to give it a four out of five. Moving on here, we have the chocolate glazed donut flavor. Now, a lot of these flavors do contain chocolate, so if you're not a fan of chocolate, you might be missing out on these. But let's try the chocolate glazed donut. To be honest, guys, I'm not a big fan. It's very, very sweet. The texture's there. There is a nice vein of chocolate running through it, so you do get some texture there. But it does just tastes like pretty much sweet and chocolate, which I guess in some ways that's what a glazed donut is, but I'm not getting any of that kind of bakery flavor. It's all just sweet and chocolate. So in terms of the chocolate glazed donut, I am gonna give it a three out of five. It's pretty good, the texture's there, but honestly, it's just like a sweet chocolate. I'm not too impressed with it, but it's still a pretty decent ice cream and the texture is there. Moving on to the mint chocolate chunk. That is a typical mint uh, chip ice cream. It is dyed green. Some of them are, some of them aren't, depending on the manufacturer you go to, but I guess it doesn't really make that much of a difference. So let's give it a taste. You know, I'm not the biggest mint chip fan in the world, but that is actually a very good mint chip ice cream. The uh, chocolate chunks are large enough that you get some crunch to it. The mint ice cream is there, but it's not overpowering. It really reminds me of those little silver and green wrapped mints you get from like the Olive Garden. Um, pretty good ice cream. I'm gonna give it a four out of five. I think it's fantastic. The texture's there, it tastes good. I'm not a big mint chocolate fan, but 
I'm gonna kind of abstract my own opinions from it and just say, you know what, that's a four out of five ice cream. Moving on to the coffee and cream. I'll tell you what guys, the second you open this pint, you get a big whiff of that coffee. It does smell like a coffee shop, nothing artificial about it. It really does smell like a nice cup of coffee. So let's see if it tastes as good as it smells. Okay. I actually really do enjoy that one. It is a coffee flavor, but not super overpowering. I can understand why they call it a coffee cream. It's a bit sweet. I'd almost consider it like um, maybe one of those like kind of sweetened, creamy Starbucks Frappuccinos. That's kind of what it reminds me of, but it's still a very good ice cream. The flavor's there. And as with all of these, the texture on the ice cream is spot on. It rolls really nicely on the spoon. It breaks down in your mouth really well. Maybe I'm uh, speaking too early, but so far these ice creams have been fantastic. So this one, I'm also going to give, you know what, I'm going to give it a four and a half out of five. I actually really like this coffee and cream. Next on our list is butter pecan. I can see right off the bat that there's a quite a bit of chunks of pecans in there. It's a nice white ice cream. So let's taste it. Okay guys, my favorite one yet. This is absolutely delicious. The texture is there. The pecans have a nice crunch to them. It is a little bit sweet. I will say that that kind of caramelly flavor you get in butter pecan. It's very potent in here. It is very sweet, but that's kind of a good thing with ice cream, right? You're looking for a sweeter alternative. I really like this one. I'm still going to give it a four and a half out of five because I don't think it's quite at that five level, but so far the butter pecan is my favorite flavor. Next down our line, we have the red velvet. I'm actually very excited with this one because I'm a huge red velvet fan. There's a place here in Vegas called nothing Bunt cakes and they, they obviously make Bunt cakes, but, um, they have this really delicious red velvet cake. And before I was keto, man, I could reckon an entire cake myself. So finding a good substitute for a red velvet has been hard, whether it be cake or ice cream. So I have a lot of hope riding on this one. So let's see what it's all about. First of all, it is a kind of a deeper, almost maroon color as opposed to that bright red that you see on the packaging. But I'm willing to let the color go if it tastes good. Now this one's pretty good. I would say a three and a half out of five. It has a really strong chocolate finish on the end of it, which is kind of what you'd expect from a red velvet. But on the front end, it's very, very sweet. Almost like you'd expect like a frosting, but almost too so that you don't actually taste much of the chocolate until moments after you swallow it. The sweet in the beginning really overpowers the chocolatey flavor of the red velvet. So three and a half out of five, it's all right. Still haven't found a good substitute for red velvet, but it's decent. And the last one on our list guys, it is the peanut butter fudge. So I'm expecting this to be kind of the opposite of the chocolate peanut butter. I'm expecting this to be like a peanut butter ice cream with chocolate in it, but let's see if I was right. Boom. Got one right for once guys. So again, with this one, big chunks in there, lots of swirls. That's one thing I've noticed about all of them is they didn't neglect the texture. The texture in terms of the ice cream is good and they put a lot of mix-ins that add a nice crunch, a nice different feel to it. So let's taste the final ice cream, which is our peanut butter fudge. Okay, so with this one, the flavor's there. The peanut butter ice cream is very flavorful. It definitely does kind of have that creamy peanut butter flavor to it. And then you do hit the fudge and it's nice and gooey which I think is great. What I will say is it has the kind of like whipped frosting type of feel to it where it's not this kind of creamy smooth ice cream like the others. This one, the texture is a little off for me and maybe it's just the pints I got. They did ship them to me. So maybe this one got slightly melted. I'm not sure, but this one feels too airy and not as like creamy. It doesn't scoop as well. It's almost whipped in a way. So for that reason, I am going to give this one a three out of five. It's okay. I probably wouldn't buy it personally. The flavor is there, but the texture is not as good as any of these other ones that we have here. Well, now that you guys have heard my opinions of the flavors of all seven of these ice creams in the new Enlightened Keto Collection, what do I think of the product as a whole? Well, I think the texture is good. Probably the best texture of a keto ice cream that I've had so far. And most of the flavors were pretty good. So I would give it a four to five as a total rating. Now, the one caveat to this would be that, uh, that non-GMO soluble corn fiber. Guys, I really couldn't find a lot of information on it. And that's kind of upsetting. And I don't really like that. I've seen reports saying that, you know, there's a glycemic index between 20 and 25, but those were estimates and there was nothing concrete. I've seen blog posts saying that it did not spike someone's glucose levels. I saw ones that said it did. So I think we need to be a little bit careful with this ingredient until I can find more concrete information. And if you yourself have seen some good scientific concrete information on this corn fiber, 
go and leave it in the description or in the comment section. That way I can be educated and you can help educate everybody else out there and just kind of benefit the keto community. But even with that, I'm gonna assume that every gram of fiber in these pines are from that soluble corn fiber. And most of them only have about two grams of fiber. So let's assume that it does have that 20 to 25 glycemic index like people are reporting. I still don't think it would be that bad for you. So again, I will give it a four out of five. I think it's gonna be a really good addition to the keto ice cream selections. And of course, guys, I will leave a link in the description to where you can buy this. And of course, you can always find it at your grocery stores if they carry in line. But with that, guys, I am going to go and close with the video. If you like this video, leave it a like. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section. And if you have not subscribed yet, do me a huge favor, guys. Hit that subscribe button, show some love, and I will see you in the next one.